Being young is all about having fun. If you're hanging out with friends, seeing a movie, or just going for a walk, it's important to stay busy. For most young people in Canada, passing the time is not a problem. There are many different things to do and many people to see. Things can be a bit different living in an isolated community, though. Sometimes, living in a small town can have its disadvantages. You don't have the liberties of seeing a movie in the theater or driving to the next town over and seeing friends. Hello and welcome to Swangen. I'm your host, Des Lorreen. On the show today, we'll bring you to Inuvik, Northwest Territories, where we'll find out how some young people are spending their time and what the town has planned to make sure the youth are getting the most out of the long winters in Canada's Western Arctic. We'll take a tour of the new recreation facility and speak with an RCMP officer about the programs in place for the young people of Inuvik. You're watching Swangen, our strength, right here on APTN. Peter Clarkson, uh, Mayor for the Town of Inuvik. Started as Mayor in November of 2000 and uh, was just recent, recently re-elected uh, in October of uh, 2004. So I have two years in this term. And uh, I guess what we've tried to do the last four years, uh, myself, council, and staff, is to uh, make Inuvik a, a better place to live, a healthier place, a more active place, uh, a place that uh, addresses a lot of the concerns and interests that the residents have, uh, try to develop more things for youth to do, try to make the town look more attractive, get more paving uh, completed, a better drainage system, try to do some uh, town planning uh, so that we can uh, develop for the future, and get the community ready, you know, for any opportunities in the future. So, yeah, we tried to, you know, have some vision and see where the community, you know, would like to go. and. Uh, in the same time, you know, take care of, you know, the normal municipal services, you know, water, sewer, roads, uh, garbage pickup, uh, you know, the normal things that people, you know, depend on a mun municipality for. I'm Cassidy Walper from Edmonton, Alberta. I moved here about four years ago to live with my dad. It's all right at times, but it gets pretty boring. There's not much for the youth to do. And there's a lot of alcohol and drugs, and it's hard to stay away from it. So if you're coming in for hockey or curling or the community hall, everything will come through these doors. There'll be a, a ramp coming up, so if, if someone needs to use a ramp, and then there's also stairs. And this is kind of a waiting area where people will uh, sit and wait if they're waiting for a ride. And we'll have a drop-off area up front and then two, um, two big parking areas on either side. Well, it's attached to the current uh, recreation complex, which has the arena, the curling rink, uh, the community hall, the fitness center, and, and um, it'll have in it. I mean, it, it's mostly an aquatic center. It has kind of two pools in it: a leisure lifestyle pool, as well as a four-lane lap pool, 25-meter lap pool. Um, but it's also got a steam room, sauna room, a whirlpool, a 190-foot water slide two squash courts, kids' play zone, a uh, birthday room, a large area where people can go and just, you know, have their lunch. So I, th I think it's going to be a great addition to the community. APTN rocks! Yeah, I'm Scott Turner. I'm from Inuvik. Uh, it's changed a lot since when I've grown up. Like, they're actually paving the roads. <laughs> That's cool. What about the, uh, the programs, <laughs> the things in place for the youth, like the youth center and the skate park? Oh, they're great. You know, it's keeping lots of kids out of trouble. Uh, giving us things to do, rather than other things, like bad things. Uh, I was in the arts festival for a while. Can you just uh, talk about the arts festival there? Just like, but that's held yearly, right? Yeah. So what was it like this year? No, uh, it was kind of low budget, if I might say, but I've seen better. Uh, it was a good experience, you know. All sorts of carving and stained glass. It's wicked. This is where the gatekeeper will sit, and there will be a, um, a, a big counter there, and staff will sit there and take admission for the swimming pool, or just direct people if they're going in. We've set it up so that we've got some large lockers if people want to you know, lock up their coat and boots if they're going curling or whatever. They can do that you know, as they're coming into the facility. Um, my name's Ryan Biner, and I was born and raised in this town, lived here my whole life. Um, I like it, it's a good town. 
don't think there's a problem with youth running wild. I mean, in every community you'll have some youth that are um, not getting the direction and attention they need, uh, you know, from their parents. And uh, so they're acting out, they're looking for attention. Um, you know, if we, if we look at the population in the schools and the youth that aren't going to school, you know, we probably have, you know, 14 to 1500 youth in the community. Um, and a lot of those youth are doing very productive, healthy things. They're involved in sports teams. They're involved in cultural events and organizations. They're involved in working. Uh, but then, you know, we probably have 10 to 15 youth in town that are, you know, creating problems. They're doing vandalism. They're throwing rocks at cars as they drive by. Um, and, and they're, you know, stealing snow machines. And I think, you know, we just need to look at how that problem can be solved. You know, is it, is it a problem because they're not getting attention at home and direction they need? Um, and then, you know, what can be done? But I think it's a community problem. It, it's, it's not an RCMP problem. You know, it's not a bylaw enforcement problem. It's, it's a community problem. And, uh, you know, if people aren't being responsible, uh, you know, for their children, then that's something the whole community has to look at. Hi, my name is Corey Hunt. I'm 18 years old, and I've been working at the youth center for approximately a year and three months. It's the only place that the youth can hang out and have fun, and unless at their friend's place or going sliding, snowboarding, or going snowmobiling. I started coming here when I was about 13 years old. Mainly just come, it's like a job center. Mainly just come in and play pool, play Xbox, play some games, so. Um, well, as a child, I mean, a lot younger, I mean, everything just seemed uh, a little bit slow and I don't know, I, I just like the flow of it. But then uh, these uh, past few years, I mean, even though the pipeline being built and stuff like that, um, this town just like boomed or something. I mean, it's like, I know it's, it's getting around in, like just about a city, almost uh, something like that, I don't know. Stay tuned to Swangin, our strength, right here on APTN. You're watching Swangin, our strength, right here on APTN. Hello there, sir. How are you today? You looking for a criminal record? Yes. Okay. Let me see what I got for you here. Um, you know what you looking for? Okay. You need to fill out one of those with some ID when you come back, and uh, we'll have it filled out. It usually takes five to seven business days to, to, uh, to have it all complete. Uh, my name is uh, Merle Carpenter, uh, a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police uh, at the Inuvik Detachment. Well, first of all, I think we need uh, uh, to work with the, <clears throat> the, the parents, need to be more accountable for their children. Um, we grew up in a society where we like to spoil our children and uh, we don't want to discipline them as much. And we, I, I, just what I've grown up and seen is uh, the community tend to want to um, hang on to their children more and mo longer and longer. You know, that there's their only child or only couple children and they, they spoil them. Um, they gotta be, <clears throat> uh, look after them, find out what their interests are, uh, be more involved with their children's activities. All these little things will help in the long run from a policing perspective. Um, the, uh, the community's done a fabulous job in with regards to the recreation facilities that uh, have gone up in the last few years since I've been here. I've been away for a number of years. I just came back uh, uh, two and a half years ago. There's the new uh, <clears throat> the arena, 
building of the swimming pool. They've got great soccer program in the school, um, volleyball as well. Uh, whatever your children are interested, interested in doing, try and take an interest in that and show them that they're interested. interested. And uh, it just makes the child feel more noticed. The child feels that, uh, you know, that you mean something to your parents. Um, well, I, I, I think the center, um, and we've been trying to attract, you know, more and more youth you know, to recreation in Inuvik, and I think with the year-round pool and everything else that's involved in there, I think we'll get more and more people going all the time. I think the fitness center was a good example. Um, we put in the fitness center a couple years ago, and I think right now we have almost 700 uh, access cards uh, to get into the center out. You know, and we have over 350 active members. I mean. It's, it's just, if you build it, people will come. And I think this uh, facility, you know, we're, it's going to get a lot of use, uh, not only from the residents of Inuvik, but throughout the entire, you know, Beaufort Delta and visitors. So I, I think it'll add a lot and, and provide, you know, some really positive activities in, in the community. You know, a certain, a certain group of youth will get into it, but there's all different kinds, you know. You don't see half the youth of Inuvik at one point, you know. You never see them all in one spot. And this is the pool area, and there's two different types of pools here. There's a leisure lifestyle pool, which has a tots area here, which will have a, a bench and a bunch of bubbles, and it's very shallow. We've got a ramp there so someone can, if, if uh, you can't go downstairs or you're in a wheelchair, you can take the ramp in. There's a running river which will have a current in it. There's a big mushroom there where the scaffolding is. We'll have water coming over it. And then on the other side, we've got a four-lane, 25-meter four lap pool. And the whole thing has been themed to be a tropical paradise. So there's no windows in this whole area. And if you look across the water, even the tiles and everything are made to look like a beach as you're looking out into the ocean. This is a poolside terrace and was set up to look like a, a street side kind of cafe. Uh, as part of the overall construction and stuff, we decided to theme the entire center. So uh, the, the theme guy, as we call him, Gary, came up from Comox, BC and um, did an entire, I guess what we call a tropical paradise uh, theme. And then we've also got a large mural. We kind of have a transition between the north and the tropical paradise. We've got a large float plane, float base uh, mural. Uh, which uh, people really like, and it's, it's got a picture of uh, Freddie Carmichael's first uh, float plane. And, um, you know, we, we regionalized it a bit. We got a sign up which points towards Tuck and Aklavik and Fort McPherson and Sigachik. And, yeah, and that area will be a great area for having lunch or just sitting and visiting. So I think it, um, the whole center is going to be an incredible place to be. This justice committee thing they have going is too light on the youth, and I think they need stricter punishments for what they do. <laughs> yeah! That cost you down at 50. <laughs> yeah, I've been skateboarding for three years now, and I've seen a lot of changes um, from when I started skateboarding. There's been couple of us now there's like this whole town is into skateboarding now and every kid loves it first we started off skateboarding street skating a long town and we got kicked out of pretty much every place we skated and then i guess the town uh, thought of a skate park and they sent this guy up to build a skate park and he set some meetings at the school for all the youth at skateboards and um it just started off like that. Uh, our, our members go to and referee the hockey games. Um, we have a coach that would coach uh, basketball or soccer as well. Um, um, I'm a member of the board of directors for the Aboriginal youth at the Ingemal Hall. I mean, it's not only Aboriginal, it's any youth who would like to attend. But uh, uh, we have a liaison officer for the uh, youth center that goes there and, and does specific programs and, and helps out as much as, as he can. Yeah, so this is the uh, Whirlpool hot tub. That uh, area here is what we call Running River, and the, the water circulates around, and that would be another island built in there. 
and then there, as you can see, is the uh, water slide, moves up the stairs and starts up there. The theming was sponsored by uh, CIBC, and that's why their name is on the balloon. And I think people are impressed with it. I think it's really going to set some standards for recreation facilities throughout the north. And um, it's going to be the only year-round pool uh, above the Arctic Circle. It's the, uh, our next closest year-round pool would be Whitehorse or Yellowknife. So I think it's going to be a great facility, not only for Inuvik, but you know, for the entire Beaufort Delta. Stay tuned to Swangen, our strength, right here on APTN. You're watching Swangen, our strength, right here on APTN. I think there's all sorts of programs in place for the youth. Uh, I mean, the town has some programs and that recreation is, is part of our mandate. So we've got the uh, Midnight Sudden Rec Complex. I mean, there's all sorts of programs at the schools. Uh, the Youth, youth Center is running programs. The Inuvialo at the Gwich'in have been running programs. There's all sorts of uh, sports organizations, minor hockey, uh, there's skating, there's uh, um, minor, minor ball or softball or slow pitch. Um, I think for a community our size, we have uh, you know, a lot of opportunities for youth. You know, there's skiing, there's you know, just about everything you could um, ever, ever want in a community is, is here. Uh, it's just a matter of, I think, you know, parents getting their kids out there, getting them involved, taking the time to spend some time with them, and making sure, you know, the kids have the opportunities. Um, a lot of these events uh, and, and things are free, and, and so it, it doesn't, um, doesn't take a lot of money to participate. It's just, you know, the interest and in, in, in getting, you know, kids out there and, how, you know, supporting them in that way. I mean, there's a youth center. Hardly, I don't know how much people go there or not. I don't really go to it myself, but I know they, they held a lot of things this year. I mean, at the, at the festivals and stuff like that, and it's going good. All right, message to you viewers out there. Do not try to set I think if we look at how much use the, um, even the small seasonal pool gets, uh, a lot of times it's, it's filled to capacity, there's kids lined up outside. This new facility has so much more. I mean, the 190-foot water slide, um, the leisure lifestyle pool itself is very interactive, the lap pool, and it's going to be year-round. I mean, you won't just take swimming lessons in the uh, summer now. Kids will be able to learn how to swim throughout the year. Um, you know, we've got long winters and dark winters, and, and this place will be like taking a trip down south. and. Uh, you know, the tropical paradise, and uh, you'll feel like you're someplace else. I mean, I think, you know, the one problem we're going to have is, um, you know, people lined up to go in and will be, you know, to capacity. Um, and I, I think it's also going to be a great employment program for kids. A lot of people growing up in communities where they have pools, you know, work part-time as lifeguards, and, and so this will, you know, provide more employment opportunities for youth also. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it. Uh. Um, I'd like to see a lot more things to do with computers, like maybe a youth computer center. That'd be cool. Anything else you want to say about Anubik or anything? anything, anything? Nah, Anubik's awesome. Right, there you go. There's no other place I'd rather be. Back to that. Um, we have like good sports facilities, um, the tennis court that the, the, they put up last summer with uh, the paving went on town, I think they paved that. They put the skate park in. Um, so the, the town council and the mayor are doing a good job in Inuvik in with regards to organized sports and trying to keep these kids uh, busy with activities. Ten-year-olds going out back and smoking a doobie. That's brutal. A couple of ten-year-olds going out back smoking. They've got us, like, the older people set examples, like, 
doing it beside trappers or like in front of this place or on the bridge and seeing little kids walking by, just seeing like, I say that. Well, I think it's a good thing for people to get involved in this kind of thing and keep them out of trouble. Yeah, you want me to? Yeah, dude. Just take the mic off first. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can always have uh, better facilities, more equipment, more things to do, but I, I think it is it is uh, providing a good service to the community. It, it does get a lot of youth use. Uh, the youth there, you know, you can go by there anytime it's open and there are youth inside uh, the facility, either hanging out, playing games, um, you know, watching TV, on the computers. So I, I think it does provide uh, a good service. There's been some questions about its location. Is it a good place for it to be right downtown where kids are hanging out kind of on the streets? Um, but I think we need to go to the youth and say, okay, what would you like in a facility as far as location, as far as, you know, a new facility? It was an election issue. People said, you know, it should be moved, uh, should have a new facility. So as we get some of these other uh, projects completed, maybe, uh, you know, we'll start looking at, okay, and, and work with the youth and, and work with the uh, youth center board and say, okay, if we're going to have a new center, where should it be? What should it involve? And, and you know, see if we can't work on it as a community. Um, the youth center is located on Main Street across from the IDC and the hours of operations is Monday to Friday, 6 to 10, and on weekends, which is Saturday, 6 to 12. Sunday closed, Wednesdays closed. I'm Dana Lenny from Inuvik NWT. What do you think about the skate park? I think it's a good thing. Um, keeps youth busy, out of trouble. Something to do, you know. Have you been to the youth center? And like, what do you think of the youth center? The way it is now? Um, I haven't been in it this year. But I used to always hang out in it when I was younger. It kept me busy and it was a big social thing. Something to do, hang out. There's you know, I think there's lots going to be going on this summer and uh, as well as you know the youth like to get out on the land like anybody else and whether it's fishing or hunting or berry picking I mean it was just a great summer last year for all of that kind of stuff so you know I think I think summers up uh, in Inuvik and the Beaufort Delta are, are you know incredible people look forward to them all all year long and so I think the town will have Certainly lots of activities again this summer and, and you know, try to keep youth as busy as possible. That was our program for this week. Thank you for watching Swangin. I'm your host, Des Lorene. Be sure to tune in next week for more programming from Canada's Western Arctic. Let me see it.